Hello. Well, this is a video response to a tag video from Gordon at SteelyDan473. It's all about my favourite navigation equipment. So I'm going to be talking about this. It's the Garmin Etrex Vista HCX. And also I'll talk a little bit about OpenStreetMap, a project I've been involved in over the last few years, and how the two go together. So, first of all, thanks very much to Gordon for tagging me in this video. Now, Gordon makes lots of excellent videos about his walks uh, in North Wales and beyond. And if you'd like to see his channel, uh, there's a little link in the top corner right there, and that'll take you to see some stuff that he produces. Now, his video where he tagged me was actually a video response to Graham at WXPM. If you're interested in navigation and navigation techniques, he makes an excellent series of videos on land navigation and I definitely recommend checking out his channel. So again, there's another little link just there that will take you to see some of the stuff he does. Okay, so this is the Etrex Vista HCX. Now I've had this model for four and a half years, since December 2007, and it's pretty much come everywhere with me, so I've taken it um, to other countries, uh, up, up in the mountains, out on the bike, whilst out, out in the car, just about everywhere. So, it, um, now the UK model, I don't know if this is still true for models bought overseas, but it takes um, two AA batteries, and I actually, I, I've actually bought rechargeable batteries, and I've found the battery life is pretty good actually. Now I almost find I can get you know, up to 48 hours, possibly sometimes longer, off a full charge. Even with you know, almost continuous use for several hours. Now the HCX ver version, as opposed to the HC version, uh, allows you to put a micro SD card there into the unit. And that can store your, your maps and also any uh, GPX traces. So you can actually record where you've been and upload those to a computer later. So when you first switch it on, it will try and acquire satellites. So even though I'm actually indoors, it's uh, still managing to uh, find some satellites. Now, I've always found the sensitivity pretty good, uh, especially when out in the open. And, um, you know, the accuracy can be down to a metre, possibly even less. The typical accuracy is, seems to be about three to four metres. And it does depend on whether you've got tall buildings near you or things like that. So, what are some of the features of the Trex Vista? Well, it has a map display. Although the map you tend to get with the units is very basic and uh, you'll probably want to upgrade to something a bit better. I'll come on to that a little bit later in the video. Now there's also an electronic compass. Now this can be quite useful if you want to do things like geocaching because you can just point to the cache even when you're stationary. For some units without an electronic compass you actually need to be moving for you to get a, uh, a reliable heading. Uh, there is actually a geocaching feature. Uh, you can download the geocache details straight from the geocaching website via a USB cable to the unit. And when you actually find one, you press it, you found it, and it will tell you what the next nearest one is. Now there's also an altimeter built into this unit. As you can see it's saying about 81 meters thereabouts which is about 265 feet, which is about right for here. Now, GPS altitude is much less accurate than GPS latitude or longitude. So having a barometer inbuilt is a, is a major plus. Now, because of changing air pressure, what it actually does, it calibrates over time to the GPS altitude. Uh, so, it, so it removes the effect of changing air pressure. Now when you average the GPS coordinates and the altitude over a long time, you get a much more accurate figure. Now I said earlier, you probably want to upgrade the map that comes with the unit to something better. 
Now there are a variety of maps available, some of which cost a good deal of money and some even cost more than the unit itself. But one alternative is from OpenStreetMap. Now if you've never heard of OpenStreetMap before, it's often, often been described as the Wikipedia for maps. Basically an army of volunteer mappers go out and survey their local area and then upload to a central database. Now OpenStreetMap started in 2004 from a completely blank canvas and since then has grown remarkably. In fact there are nearly two-thirds of a million uh, u registered users who have been mapping almost the entire world. If you're in the UK or Ireland uh, there's a website called Talky Toaster and I'll put a link in the description at the bottom uh, where you can download a free map for your GPS from OpenStreetMap and some of them are completely routable with contours and everything like that and they're very good so uh, I would highly recommend it if you're in other countries there's several different other providers where you can download free maps from OpenStreetMap so as an example here is an excerpt from Shining Tor, a hill very close to, to where I live, showing contour lines, major roads, footpaths and all sorts of other features as well. The good thing is that if you do come across a footpath, a road, or something else that's incorrect or missing, you can actually go and edit it yourself and correct it. And so that next time someone downloads a map for a GPS, you know, the correction will be included. Now it is getting better all the time, although it may not contain every feature that's on some of the professional maps such as you know, from the Ordnance Survey in the UK. Now before I finish, I should probably point out that I don't use a GPS as my only navigation tool. Now my unit over the years has been very reliable, however you know, the batteries could run out, you know, the unit could um, fail and if the clouds down and visibility is very low that could leave you in a very dangerous position so you should always take a map and compass with you and know how to use them now uh, in the UK we have excellent uh, explorer maps for, uh, in, uh, made by the audience survey now they contain all sorts of features uh, very useful in navigation such as walls and fences um, streams, footpaths and all sorts of stuff like that. Now I actually have quite a lot of these covering lots of the UK's uh, hilly and mountainous areas. Now they only cost a few pounds and it's a small price to pay for keeping you safe in the mountains. The number of times you see mountain rescue reports of people who have gone up in the hills and mountains without any form of navigation equipment other than a sheet of paper with written descriptions. It's amazing. So if you'd like to see some of my videos I've done from the hills, mountains and lower areas as well, I've created a little playlist out and about and uh, have a look to see what you think. Now this is a response to a tag video which usually means I would then ask three more channels to post a video response uh, about their favourite item of navigation equipment. Now I've noticed that a lot of the people currently subscribed to my channel and that I subscribe to have already been tagged in previous videos. So I'm going to broaden the net a little bit and say if anyone watching this video would like to post a video response uh, about perhaps something they like to use uh, for navigation, uh, post it as a video response and I'll put it just down there. Okay, thanks for watching.